AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host, Mark Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Welcome to the AI in Action podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, Chief Customer Officer at Aldus International. Today's guest is Lars Schwab, Director of Analytics, Artificial Intelligence and Blockchain at Lufthansa Industry Solutions. Lars, very welcome to the show today. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So Lars, you're responsible for data analytics, AI and blockchain. For people that don't know necessarily much about Lufthansa Industry Solutions, can you give us a little bit of an overview about the group and maybe just how diverse it is? Yes, sure. Um, so I, I suppose that everyone knows uh, Lufthansa, the airline. Uh, which is a five-star airline, great company. But uh, the, the Lufthansa Industry Solutions is a, is a consulting house uh, within the Lufthansa Group. And we are not uh, the, the typical IT department uh, uh, under, the, um, under the, the, the face of a, of a consulting house, in-house consulting. We are um, a, a true consulting house. We are doing 50% of our revenue and projects outside of the Lufthansa Group and 50% we are doing inside the Lufthansa Group. And uh, even within the Lufthansa Group, we still have to compete for every project, for every, for every project, for every position uh, with other consultants or suppliers. And we are um, a, um, an IT consulting company. So we, we start from, from, from digital strategy. We are not the typical strategy consultant, but we, we do a digital strategy. Uh, and then we're doing um, everything along the whole value chain uh, down to uh, operations, even, right? So application development operations. We are uh, more than 2,000, 2,000 people in this company and we are supporting um, major, major uh, companies within uh, Germany and all the large companies within Lufthansa Group. Lars, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into this world. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, if, you, if you would look up my, my background, you see that I am an example of, a, of, an, of an academic or a former academic who, who made uh, the, the transition or who successfully made the transition uh, to industry. So I spent most of my academic career in, in what is called a computational neuroscience, which is a field uh, at the intersection between machine learning and, uh, and neuroscience. So I did um, experiments, I did mathematical models of brain function. Um, but then after a while, uh, actually after quite some while, I, I, the last few years of my academic career, I also worked as an, as an assistant professor in, in computer science for adaptive uh, software systems. I made the transition to industry uh, in a conscious and um, intended way. Uh, why? Because everything I have done in academia and research was really directed towards uh, things that may be applicable in let's say, maybe even 20 years. Uh, but I wanted to see uh, the work that I'm doing um, um, being applied uh, at, a, at a faster at a faster pace. So I transitioned to industry uh, actually uh, right in the phase where where AI uh, took off. Um, and uh, so I started uh, in, uh, in, uh, in online advertising. Why? Because online advertising is really an exciting field where big data technology, machine learning and operationalizing everything uh, comes together. After I understood how uh, online advertising works, I realized that the next big thing at that point in time where I made the transition to the industry solutions where I'm now working is to put AI and machine learning to work in, in industry. And this is what I have been doing since then at Lufthansa Industry Solutions where I have built up uh, together with a peer of mine, um, the whole uh, technology consulting in terms of uh, machine learning AI and what is still called big data. So we build out the team and we are doing consulting implementation work. Uh, we are operationalizing AI uh, solutions for various industries. So anybody that's been in the world of, of data science and AI and works in a, in, a, in a company will understand that it's not a straightforward exercise and there's a variety of different challenges along the way in yes, data. Right data can be can be one uh, culture can be a second mm. tell us a little bit about 
your approach to work with large organizations? The, uh, the funny thing is that uh, because we are a consulting house owned by Lufthansa, uh, we are in that respect a little bit different from, um, f from consulting houses where when you are a data scientist, for example, with, with one of the big four or some other large uh, consulting companies, because we also Lufthansa, right? So, um, so we are the data people within the Lufthansa group on the one hand, but we are also uh, the consultants for Lufthansa and for, for other big brands. And of course, getting the right data, getting the proper data is, uh, is always a challenge. So I think for new projects, so for new projects, I think that the ratio of um, spending 80% of your time and getting the data, cleaning the data and so forth uh, still applies. And only if you have set um, the, the foundations and established platforms and, and processes, then you can move away from uh, you know, the 80, 20 to let's say maybe even 50, 50, uh, I would say. So uh, we had, um, we collect a lot of experiences in, in, in getting data, cleaning the data for, for various industries, but we also set up platforms um, for, for machine learning, for analytics, uh, sometimes um, using, um, uh, using our own um, implementations, our own platforms, sometimes a combination of uh, best of um, best of breed solutions. So th this is, I would say, uh, very very similar to, to many to many experiences uh, that, that other data scientists um, are are having. Um, but there is uh, one interesting um, one interesting approach that we took, and this is uh, this is a garage mode. Uh, we 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 invented this mode, and we called this um, the the maker space, the AI maker space, and uh, it's. At first sight, it appears very similar to to data labs and, and innovation labs. Uh, so we, in the end, we had uh, more than than twenty uh, AI experts in in this garage, uh, and, and we invented this together with Lufthansa Technik, which is a large company within the Lufthansa Group. And uh, the key idea here was to really have have AI experts who are who are full stack experts, or at least to to a large extent full stack experts, and they are together with departments um, understanding the business problem and um, developing solutions very quickly. And um, so, two two success factors I would like to to emphasize here. First is um, it's the people, right? So uh, the people are really trained in such a way that they are not only a hardcore uh, data scientist, they know, you know, state of the art machine learning techniques and so forth, but they can also implement prototypes completely um, by themselves or in very small teams. And they can, um, uh, they can really communicate, right, with, with people in the departments. So our, our data scientists, they are not on, they are not a typical data scientist suited only for, for, for back office uh, jobs. And the second point I want to emphasize is that we, uh, we set up a platform um, partly with um, open source tools, partly with commercial tools, partly with uh, our own um, uh, developments in such a way that we can move uh, very quickly from uh, through the different to the different stages of maturity of, um, of, of AI solutions. So typically you start with a uh, prototype or proof of concept, then you go to an MVP uh, and then to enterprise ready solutions. And we have, we have one sound uh, foundations, completely container based. Uh, so, and very, we can very easily move from, from prototypes to production. We, we usually have only to add things, but we generally don't throw uh, much things, uh, much things away, except for the very, very early stages where every data scientist or AI experts, they can use their, um, I call it their weapon of choice when they're doing their very, very first and early prototypes. So it's a technological part of it. And there is an, um, a people part of it. And it's an organizational part. And, and this is where budget comes in. So we uh, arrange things such that there is uh, an initial um, a budget for, for projects. So um, departments can say, okay, I have an idea. Um, and uh, they can go to the makerspace and have it uh, have it explored. Uh, and we have uh, various meeting formats where these ideas can can come up, and where where people from departments are coming, they are um, formulating their their initially only vaguely formulated ideas. Uh, then we then we uh, make them more precise uh, together, and um, and the first few weeks uh, they are actually free, so to say, right? So. 
uh, you can have AI experts for the very first few weeks for free, but the AI experts, they are trained in order to design solutions so that afterwards the department generally says, yes, uh, so we, we do the buy-in um, and then we move uh, to the next stages of, of maturity. And this worked out pretty well. Lars, tell us a little bit about some of the case studies that you've actually got where you can show kind of a benefit from this approach. So I think I can talk about uh, two two um, examples. So one is, a, is an example from Lufthansa Technik where um, engineers are repairing, for example, engines. And there is an engine coming in to Lufthansa Technik and then the engineers have to look at it. They have to, um, um, to estimate uh, how long a repair is taking and so forth. And often there are damages that they have not seen before. So generally there, then you ask um, a more experienced uh, colleague, the colleagues looks at the damage uh, or at a photo of the damage and uh, then can quickly recall when such a damage has been encountered before. Um, and this is a problem because uh, there are only a few very experienced uh, colleagues uh, and they may even enter retirement soon. So what we have done is we collected, um, or we, we developed an AI based on a large database of images so that you can do a uh, reverse image search and uh, very quickly find out uh, very, very um, visually similar looking damages. And then you can find um, a similar damage uh, in, uh, from the past. And uh, the, the return of investment uh, can easily be calculated because you can uh, save um, hundreds and thousands of working hours of uh, well-trained engineers so that they don't have to dig through files and find similar damages. But the AI is telling them, well, look in February uh, 2016, there you have a similar damage and then you can uh, move on with your work. So this is, uh, th there the return of investment was uh, pretty obvious and easy to calculate. And one trick here was also that um, Lufthansa Technik was so smart uh, in, in the years before that they uh, took photographs of, of every damage, uh, collected them um, for potentially future AI and machine learning solutions. And on, it was only uh, you know, in, the last, in the last year that uh, we could build on, on this um, uh, collected data set in order to come up with, with such a solution that saves uh, a lot of um, hours of work. So the, the, the second example there, it's actually a little bit harder to quantify the return of investment. Um, what is it about? So Lufthansa Group as a large uh, corporation, in particular in the COVID-19 world, has to pay a lot of attention on cash flow. So you really want to know what is the... What what is the cash flow now? What is the cash flow next week? What is the week at a, at a much shorter, um, shorter time interval? You want to predict also your cash flow. So uh, existing solutions um, are unfortunately not well suited in order to make good cash flow predictions. Um, so what we set up is a, is a system which is using um, natural language processing, customized embeddings and so forth in order to to get um, from, from individual items um, on, uh, on builds and um, in, our, in our systems to assign them to categories. So you know this maybe from your personal finance manager, you have some, some, um, some items um, in your bank accounts, uh, some transactions, and then the, the system tells you, well, this was for, uh, for sports, for example, or for recreation. So uh, exactly the same system, but much more advanced and much more fine uh, granular, um, we set up for, for the whole Lufthansa group. And uh, now um, a CFO uh, and the controllers and the whole treasury department, they can in an in a, in a almost automatic way um, assign um, you know, thousands and ten thousands uh, of transactions to fine granular categories. And they have a much clearer picture and based on that, we derived also um, uh, predictions uh, in order to predict the cash flow for the next days and the next week. And this was really um, a very important uh, tool that we have set up. Uh, we also scanned the market and uh, investigated, you know, other existing solutions. But it turned out that here we really have to have to do our own thing. Uh, and this is something that is still in operation right now. 
uh, at the Lufthansa Group in the Treasury Department, and it helps us to manage our cash flow. We call the system the, the, the cash office AI. Lars, two very comprehensive case studies, so thank you for sharing them as well. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges to adoption that you encounter inevitably. And you kind of touched on this before with culture, organizational uh, yeah. structure of the company. Obviously, there's cash flow and there's, there's, there's numerous, but maybe could you share and how do you actually overcome them? Yes. So there is a, that's a great question because, you know, even not only within Lufthansa, but also in our consulting practices outside of the Lufthansa group, we, I think, encounter many uh, challenges that, that many data scientists also encounter. So um, first of all, we have to, to fight a little bit um, um, uh, the hype and, and, and the buzzwording uh, about AI and, and big data and analytics that is still present in the media. Uh, why? Because many, many people either expect wonders from an AI and from an analytic system, or they may even fear that their job uh, is in danger. So initially we are doing quite some ev evangelizing. Um, we, are, we are educating and training people. Then we, we look at the data and then we manage expectations. So one, one challenge is definitely um, to manage the expectation if the data is not really um, uh, suited for, uh, to, for a particular predictive scenario. And the other is to, to get really um, the people on board and work together. So you don't want to have um, uh, to have the AI experts working in the back office, and then there is a big bang with a new solution. You want that uh, that the company and the departments that they are really feeling that this is their their baby, and this is particularly important because we are we are consultants, um, so we, we need to get get the buy in um, of our of our clients. And one way how we um, address this, and we address this with one client within the Lufthansa group, is exactly this um, this uh, this maker space, where we established quite a, a lot of uh, different um, formats, meeting formats. So we have meeting formats between um, nerds uh, and AI experts uh, from from various uh, suppliers and from the Lufthansa Technik um, themselves. We have. Um, AMAs, ask me anything session. So it's open for everyone. People can come um, and, and, and talk about their, their ideas. So getting people on board um, and managing expectation, to me, this is one of the most important things. And then to deliver and not only to, to stop with PowerPoint, but this is for our company. Um, we are doing this anyway because we are very much um, implementation and IT oriented. So delivering and managing expectations, I think. Is, uh, is a challenge. Yeah, I think I think managing expectations is a particularly interesting one because senior management do have a habit of saying, "Why don't we just throw machine learning at it?" And uh, right. when if the data <laughs> if the data isn't particularly yeah. if tagged or effective, uh, it isn't necessarily going to generate a lot of positive <laughs> positive results uh, too. So it, it it can be tricky. Tell us, Lars. Tell us a, a little bit about some of the work that you're involved in the community, either through Latanza Industry Solutions, but also maybe the yes. not-for-profit uh, initiatives. Right. So um, there, there is one thing I would like to to, to emphasize in particular, and this is uh, this is a network uh, that has been set up um, in, in northern Germany in the Hamburg area. It's the ARIC, the Artificial Intelligence Center for Hamburg. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, our listeners, they don't know exactly how, how, how Germany is uh, um, structured. It's, it's, in a, it's, in a, it's a federate uh, system with, um, with, with many different counties, so to say. And um, some, some areas, they established um, AI centers in order to bring forward AI um, uh, in their pers uh, respective area. Uh, and in Hamburg, uh, this was not the case until last year. And Lufthansa Industry Solutions was one of the founding members of this network. And this ARIC network is intended to, uh, to bring together uh, researchers from, from universities, uh, bring together um, uh, the public, and bring together also the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the commercial players. So the, those who apply AI technology and those who um, who deliver it. Uh, for example, us, at, we are the industry solutions. And to some extent, this is really some sort of uh, 
yeah, you can say that you know this network is actually doing some sort of consulting, uh, the same thing that we are doing, uh, but we still have uh, supported this network. And uh, I repeat myself, we are a founding member of this network um, because we think it's it's absolutely essential that the public, that the businesses uh, and academia, that they are coming together. Uh, because if everyone knows uh, more about AI, what you can do, what you cannot do, and what happens if you are not doing anything uh, with AI and machine learning, um, this is really important. And um, yeah, so we 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 are already seeing um, uh, the benefits of this. So um, we realize that you know some of our clients they're really open and see. Um, and say now we know what you what you can really do with AI, and it's great to hear this not from some freelancers, not from the media, but from a neutral organization such as this network. Um, and this is, I think, one of the, the the major things that we have been doing. Of course, we are also present on present at. Uh, we are giving a lot of talks and presentations. Uh, we are uh, doing quite a lot. You know, um, in, in the field of explainable AI, AI ethics, and so forth. Um, so this is this is what we are doing. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. I was I was just making notes because mm -hmm. you know, one okay. of the points that kind of came through to me there is you can look at all the hype from media and different companies are always going to put on their own slant from it. But to get that unified source about what's actually the applications, implications and ramifications of, of this work in terms of proper case studies is, is great to see. Uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts, and this is my final question, about where you see the next big thing coming. You know, we, 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 it, things are changing so rapidly at the, at the moment. Where do you see it going in the next year to 18 months? I'd, I'd, I'd be scared to ask you for what the next five years would look like. Yeah, you know, the, I, I can. I would not really answer this because this is uh, uh, this is really hard to say. If you, at least if you want to be realistic, so I think we are still in in, in a very uh, special situation due to the pandemic. Um, nevertheless, I think uh, there is this um, this really big challenge of how to to handle uh, uh, privacy. Uh, in a sound way. So on the one hand, you can say uh, from a plain technological point of view, let's forget about privacy. Let's get all the data and um, and learn the best models uh, that you can. Or you can actually play the privacy card really, really hard uh, in such a way that you're blocking uh, innovation and that you cannot really do anything. I think there there is a there is a third option, and this is to to use uh, IT. Uh, on machine learning uh, technologies and approaches in order to put privacy first uh, and I would say really bet on the fact that consumers and, and corporations that they are um, uh, doing the same. So for, for Lufthansa it's clear we, we are putting privacy and security first, uh, that there is no way, um, and no other way, but um, um, for, for I don't know if you, if you're doing online advertising or you are um, I don't know, doing consumer centric um, personalization and so forth. Um, you may think, well, um, maybe we can share this or that data, but I think we should not uh, compromise on that. So I think that technologies such as um, federated learning, uh, a differential privacy uh, and so forth. So these are the, the technologies that, that need to be really truly um, utilized in order to put machine learning to work at scale while still um, uh, considering privacy. Lars, I, th I think it's a great answer because when you look at where people throw stones at AI, the first thing they're going to talk about is privacy. And if you're, yes. if you're, if you're backpedaling already on that, you're, you're going to struggle. So if you can have that as the foundation, you're going to put yourself in a, a lot better uh, position. Exactly. And I, I think people are expecting that, and I think Europe is taking the lead on that as well, which you know, which is which is really really great uh, great to see. You're listening to the AI in Action podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, Chief Customer Officer at Aldus International. Our guest today has been Lars Swabe. Lars, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. AI in Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. 
With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus Advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all us members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.